Okay, so it looks like we're going to have a restart on Sid Castle. They do have to play both maps either way. So, so they might just play deck first. All right, looks like we're going to have deck first in, and then we will restart Sid Castle. So no need to rehost. Yep, exactly. All right, so the last five minutes of our lives just never happened. Okay, so we got two full squads back in the server. Players look like they're ready to go once again. So map one will be deck, map two will be Sid Castle. We'll circle back around to that. To determine the first two points of the season for these two teams. Players are ready up. This time for real. Here is your countdown. Three, two, one. And then it's game time, baby. Con X5 kicking you off for serious this time. DW versus SOW. We're going to do map one as deck. We'll return to Sid Castle for map two with the rosters adjusted and ooh, early back and forth kills off the bat. We saw Master come in for crush. We'll see what effect that has, if anything. Scandalous with back-to-back -back goose shots. Got to be careful around that shock rifle area. It's so close quarters. The clinic looks like picked up some armor. It's going to be on the run. And much like we saw in some of the dual matches ooh, earlier, chasing people down at the beginning of a TDM game, you know they're going to be weak. Indeed, some folks will even play an entire TDM game running around as a sweeper using nothing but finishing weapons. So annoying whenever you're respawning and all of a sudden you've got a Link and a Stinger on you already. It's very demoralizing, honestly. So Rain there with a nice steal. Grabbing that belt and immediately taking damage, so no armor in the end. They do control that power up. Looks like some armor really getting spread out all amongst the teams. A couple more kills coming out and DW early on out to a lead. This is basically what we saw in Sid Castle as well. They looked really strong in the first opening minutes. So Amp is up. Let's head down to it. B-Ball is just going to piston right up to it. Takes some damage in the process. Luckily for him, the uh, armor is up, but so far just a flat cannon, so... Gonna want to find his way over. There he goes. Gets that shock rifle. It's like, you want shock or sniper? There's a kill through the mess. Close range amp link gonna just melt people down. There's a ton of people in the pit right here. This is super dangerous. Very easy way to kill your teammates, to dive two or three people into the pit. Instead, they get away somehow. And meanwhile, SOD has tied it right back up and, in fact, taken the lead. So nice comeback there. EW up was, uh, the DW was up, I think, what, 14 to 8? So the last minute or two, SOD coming, storming back. We do have this 100 armor vest popping in the pit in just a few seconds. We'll see who's down there for it. Clinic's down there. Scandalous jumping out. Scandalous actually misses it as Clinic steals it and gets away. Oh, they finally take him down from behind. DW retaking control of that pit area. Let's take a look at what's happening up top. No one really, contri or, uh, no one really committing 
a ton of resources up to this top area. You do see Scandalous up there, Alpha giving chase. Oh, you see B-Ball erasing him with that flag. 10 seconds till this amp spawns, and it looks like DW has an angle on it. Rain has boots, he's up top. Scandalous is up top. B-Ball, though, down low, might be pissing back up to it, and he does it yet again, has perfect timing. Gets away with it, and this time has a weapon ready to go. No armor to back it up, though. One kill knocks him down up top. He's got two players in front of him. I don't think he realizes he combos the, the uh, belt and gets a kill, but he goes down from behind. Scandalous grabs it. He goes down from behind, and now Clinic has it in his hands. And these two teams are just back and forth so far. So the, uh, the amp of Cursed Death... <laughs> finally ends. Everyone that we saw grab it just went down. DW right now looking at that very low health. Everyone respawning. This is turning into a, a, a street fight. Very chaotic game as neither team has really been able to hold much control of this map. 100 armor gets picked up by Scandalous. We do have this uh, shield belt spawning in about 15 seconds. We'll head back over. Look at the fighting over mid. This time we have SOD sending a couple people up top. We have belt spawning in five seconds, then about 20 seconds till amp. Jump boots are up, so if Scandalous wants to turn that corner, grab those boots, he might be able to steal this. Said B-Ball grabs it, gets away, he's taking some damage, basically negating that grab. 10 seconds till this amp spawns. We've seen uh, Blue Team actually grabbing it off the spawn a couple times. Not much happening with it as far as damage, though. There's a grab by B-Ball again. He's been all over the amp as it spawns. Oh, the ambush from behind with flag, but he gets the turnaround amped headshot. Looking for spawners now right behind him. There's so many spawn points around that shock to flak area that if you end up walking around it with amp, you can sometimes just run into people. That amp link off the spawn, just going to take him down with that last shot. And B-Ball right now... Looking to extend this killing spree. We'll stick with him for a minute and see what he can do. As the belt spawns right now, and he is right on top of it. That said, SOD, you can see, has managed to take the lead up to a nine frag lead. Really having some runs here or there. And what's interesting is when SOD is going on runs and, and, and you know building points on the scoreboard, they're not they're not doing it on the back of amp runs, they're not doing it on the back even of, of shield belt runs or anything. Oh, we see B ball getting shot down from behind. So I'll take another quick look at the scoreboard here as it's down to a six frag league and B-Ball, I will say this, B-Ball is the exception. B-Ball has been grabbing like every power up. Of course, right as I say that he goes down, but I mean, you see that clinic with seven vests, B-Ball with two belts and four amps off the spawn. Clinic now going to grab himself a belt. Alpha's running around with the amp, only 10 HP. going to be difficult for him to get anything done with it. And difficult for us to watch with the uh, the zoom in suck, so we're gonna back up. And again, this game going back and forth, getting really messy. Neither team really running around, able to assert much control over the armor. This might be one that comes down to the last couple minutes and just who goes on a run last. We're not even halfway through this one, but just so far they're just back and forth, it's a tug of war basically. DD's got 100 armor. Sure, we'll go on board with him. We got another 100 armor, this time for Clinic. They may run into each other. And there it is. The only two players with any amount of armor facing off there for a second. DD goes down by Clinic. Clinic, look at that. The only player in the entire map with armor for a second there. That's so rare to see in a 4v4. Just let you know how much fighting there's going on. This has been a very, very fast and furious match. A double-digit lead for a, for a minute there by SOD. Amp is up. Let's go up to Amp. 
see who grabs it. Oh, Scandalous has Amp and Belt. This could be a big opportunity for DW to shoot themselves back into this one. He can be extremely aggressive here. He has the rocket out. There you go. There's the kill to end Memphis' spree. Has two players spawn in front of him. If he can get some damage output, this could be huge. There's the spree. Needs one more player to jump out in front of him because he's got basically five seconds left in this amp. Oh, he had the shot he wanted. He just couldn't land it. So still a nine frag lead for DW. Again, SOW, even when they don't get the power-ups, they've managed to go on these little little spurts and runs here to, to extend this lead. So now you can see the armor complete turnaround from a couple minutes ago. Half the players running around with armor, most of them on SOD. Gonna stick with Scandalous to see if he can break that control a little bit. Still up 20 seconds till this ne next amp. See him running up top, knocking people down the mid-air link tracking. Completely devastating and more importantly, allowing him to get control of a sniper rifle. 10 seconds till this amp swans. We're gonna back away from it a bit to see there's nobody sneaking around from the backside for it. Everybody is fighting around that pit area. So B-Ball is just going to go ahead and, and piston back up to the amp. He's been doing that all day, but Scandalous takes him down with the sniper shots. Clinic has the amp in his hands. Double enforcers with amp is absolutely devastating, but he goes down. Amp gets picked up and dropped again. Rain goes down. Or excuse me, Rain gets the kill with it. And Clinic goes down. So Rain finally asserts some amount of sanity. And meanwhile, DW back within one, back up to a three-frag lead. These teams... Two thirds of the way through this one, still dead even. It is just a nonstop deluge of fighting going on. And there it is, tying it right back up with DW. Let's take a quick look at the scoreboard to get an idea of what's going on there. Anton pulling much more close with that run. Belt's dead even. 100 armor vest being traded back and forth. So SOD is getting the amp grabs, but not necessarily long runs with them. Pretty close damage between these two, and DW takes the lead right back. They, were, they opened up strong. SOD fought their way right back in. And in fact, they took, I think, up, upwards of a 10, 12-point lead at one point. DW closing the gap themselves. Oh, the dangerous jump. You saw two DW players, two red players jumping down to that shield belt. Scandalous grabs Amp across the map. You see him throwing it to his teammate. He had Amp with two HP. He may have even thrown him a sniper rifle as well. And there it is, one quick kill. So it was a smart play. And good teamwork. Not everyone even, uh, even knows that you can throw the Amp in this game. <clears throat> you can also throw jump boots, if I'm not mistaken. So something to be aware of. And another kill, Didi, making great use of this amp, keeping them in it as SOW somehow managed to gain two more frags during that amp run. And we've seen that over and over. Clinic with the headshot to protect himself. He goes down. Didi on a roll right now. We're going to stick with him for a bit, tying it right back up. Oh, the clutch shot there by Didi, knocking him off of that belt. And again, knocking Clinic off. So two quick kills by Didi. He might be on his way to a rampage here. Oh. <laughs> Talk about the jinx. In any case, though, still a dead even game. We got Alpha with the belt. Let's see what he can do with it. 10 seconds till amp spawns. Let's actually move over to the amp. There we go. B-Ball in position. He has had perfect time on this amp pretty much all game. Nobody challenging him. Alpha's behind him. He's got to be careful that B-Ball runs face-to-face -face into Alpha. He doesn't want to give up amp to an enemy player with the shield belt. That could be a problem. Oh, and there it is. Turns the corner, doubles back on Scandalous with the Rockets. Only 28 HP, but he does manage to keep that amp in his hands. On oh, the anti-combo by Scandalous. So he'll have a few more seconds, 10 seconds to do some damage with it. 
but they are closing in on him and they take him out. But not before DW takes the lead back. So Belt spawns now. Every time Belt spawns, there's been multiple people from each team all over it. You see that two blue players actually diving onto it. Clinic's got it. We'll follow him for a minute, see what he does. <clears throat> so Clinic actually taking zero damage in that little bit. So kind of an odd lull in the action right now as both teams kind of settle in. Only a minute and a half left. They might start being a little bit more careful. The mid-air flak by Clinic pulls back within one huge kill. And another one right up to Deity to again close that gap to one. Armor goes to Clinic. And this is where we talk about efficiency, right? If you have players that can play the pit in a very efficient manner, it can come up huge in these close matches. Alfred does have Amp in his hands with a one frag lead and 4v4 one two frag can happen instantly so now one frag lead right back for SOD who turned the tables and got three immediate frags less than a minute to go Amp is in Alpha's hands with only 38 HP at this point staying alive matters more than anything they have to try to find someone oh the nice peak shot I should say twitch shot straight down low to tie it back up less than 40 seconds to go Clinic right now is the only one with any amount of survivability he might be the player that has to determine this one as he is the only one on blue that can be aggressive he's peeking at three red players four red players less than 60 hp if he can be aggressive here he can completely turn the tide of this match he's got four weak red players in front of him and 150 armor and jump boots if clinic goes all in here he can finish this match but you see him he doesn't want to go down either Finally makes the move. There's one shot. There's another, and they take the lead up by two. There's three and four. All four red players who had less than 60 HP were trying to hide and stay alive. They all go down in the last 10 seconds, and SOD comes out with the win. So map one down. Remember, we are going to circle back around to Sid Castle and replay that one. We did have uh, Crush had to leave early on in it. Master came in to sub. And SOD takes map two, or I guess map one in this case. And we'll be playing Sid Castle coming up next. All right, we are back on Sid Castle. We got a little bit of a warm up. For those of you who haven't seen this map much, you know, a bit more of an introduction. I'm not gonna lie, this is one of the more complicated maps in TDM. So definitely the more that you see it, the more it'll make sense. Um, again, a work in progress. It was actually a shell map by Epic. So players from the community have been building it out, you know, adding textures, meshes and stuff. It's still kind of monochromatic. But uh, yeah, definitely an interesting layout, interesting ge uh, geometry. And hopefully folks continue their work on it. I would love to see this map fully fleshed out, especially with some different colors and different rooms. That way, you know, you have a little bit more reference points, kind of tell the different rooms apart. But trust me when I say that when players know this map, they can move around it so fluidly.
So I guess we can poke around a map, the map a little bit while we're waiting for SOD's fourth to join. Again, we, we have kind of looked at some of the low areas in this map. We've got flak in that tiny little area that's really dangerous. There's all sorts of little lifts. It's one of those maps, like I mentioned, not unlike Temple, where you can kind of creep through the bottom of the map, but really up top is where you want to be. Amp right here is back in this uh, well area. And we've seen lots of teams try to get here early, have rockets up top. So this is a key area, this top area around between rockets and up to sniper, and of course, tight close quarters around the sniper, and you also have that 100 armor vest. So it's not uncommon to see a player dedicated to basically this pickup, the sniper rifle, and then basically the immediate area around it. You don't want to stand, you don't want to hang out just in this area, indeed around this area even, but if you play one person between rockets and sniper and vest, they'll be in position to help contest the amp, and then that's up to them the rest of that map to figure out how to be useful. And that's kind of the tricky part. That's the difference between a decent player and a good player in a position like that, is really roaming around the ability to find the right place to be at the right time. So that's one thing we'll keep an eye on. And this whole map really plays like that. There's no one room where you'll just want to stick two players and say, hey, just stay here and hold it. Um, so just keep an eye out for that as we're watching this match, how these two teams play, people being in position, because you can imagine, you know, we're kind of floating around this map it's not a tiny map. It takes a little while to, to, uh, to reverse. So if you're hanging out over here at Shock and you need to be across the map in three seconds, you're out of luck and you're just out of position. So definitely important. Again, much like Temple, probably the, the closest map that I can relate it to. In any case, players are all in. Ready ups are coming in. Looks like 59X the Pain going to jump in. So a bit of a different lineup for SOD than we saw in the, the first... Uh, game that we played on this. We played about five minutes to start off, and DW is up. We'll see what happens on this this one. All right, ready ups coming in. Here's your countdown. Three, two, one. Man, it's game time, baby. Con X5 bringing you map two after the restart there. We had a crazy game on deck. SOD coming up huge in the last 10 seconds with four big kills to solidify that one. Completely different style map here in Sid Castle. Much bigger, much more methodical, position oriented. We'll see if DW can try to earn a point in this 4v4 portion by splitting maps or if SOD can come back and put two on the board. So first belt spawns in about 15 seconds. We'll head over to it, give you a view. It's kind of out of the way. It's not something that you're just going to find yourself incidentally around, unlike the belt on deck. You have to get there very, very early, and you're most likely going to have to fight people off. It kind of reminds me of the belt area on uh, on DM Cannon as well. We've seen that in 2v2 portions where you get there early, you're in this little bunker, you have to fight people away. And fighting your way back in after the team has control is really tough. Rain right now has 188 health over 150 armor. We're going to stick with him. If they can get the amp in his hands, which spawns in 10 seconds, could be a really big start to this map for him he's completely surrounded by blue right now he's gonna have to be careful he's got goo he's got rockets coming in did a nice job surviving and getting the kill but not before losing his armor and he's actually in position so there he goes ends up sneaking in and grabbing that amp has amp link gun looking for people off the spawn oh he takes down or takes shots from behind his clinic jumps down takes him down with the link gets another kill with the link so a nice turnaround there by clinic he goes down eventually but 
really uh, stopped that amp run that could have been so dangerous. And Alpha now in a killing spree. You see the, the one kill with the amp, but meanwhile, Deity looks like he scooped up that shield belt. Maybe not. Maybe he was just stacking armors because I don't see it on the scoreboard yet, but sometimes that's delayed a bit. In any case, we'll follow him as he's got some armor. What's critical in this map, and a map of this size, um, is also finding your teammates. I think this is a map where you probably want to run in pairs. Because if you get caught out, if you turn a corner and there's two, two opponents, and you're caught out by yourself, it's not something where it's easy for a teammate to slide over and, and rotate and quickly help you. It's such a big map. You see those 2v1 scenarios like we just saw by DW. It's so hard to get away from that. So off the spawn, communicating with teammates, finding a teammate to run with and preferably share a weapon. Uh, that's kind of its own skill. It's something that's hard to it's hard to just view and spectating. But whenever you play with people and you hear, you know, you hear their voice comms and all that, that's when it really comes into play. Amp up, nice kill. Take out clinic. Clinic though dives right back down off the spawn. So heads up play by clinic. Realized exactly where he spawned. Took it right back. Now he needs a weapon or health. His teammates grab both right in front of him and rain with a multi-kill, three rocket kills immediately. And that was before he grabbed Amp. Now he's got Amp in his hands, 125 armor. Looking to really do some damage as VW is breaking this one open. It's a big combo. We might see a killing spree here by Rain. Still looking pretty stacked. And look at that, three players on DW have over 75 armor. That's going to be a massive advantage in any kind of team fight or a large engagement that they get into. Five seconds till the belt spawns as well. So Rain here doesn't even necessarily need that armor. As you see him with the flak. Look at that. All four red players there. They're going to share that. Alpha now. Extra stack. Deity the only one without any armor. We'll follow Alpha for now. Rain with another kill. Look for him to possibly go dominating here soon. Still 20 seconds till this amp spawns. But again, given how big this map is, you might see people making a break on it already. Alpha with the kill right above it. You can see the amp down below. Clinic's up top. We've seen him hovering around the amp every time it spawns, but he seems to be outnumbered a lot of the times as DW is just swarming the, pow the, the power ups early. Oh, Scandalous flies in there with the jump boots and grabs it, but he goes down in a heap. We'll see who can pick it up. Deity's got it. Got to be careful, though. Diving at that Enforcer can take him down. Oh, he had to use his jump boots to avoid fall damage. Health is gone. Armor is gone. He does have vials behind him. And there is Rain on the Rampage. He also has 150 armor. Oh, Deity just survives with 2 HP. Allowing him to get the kill and that 100 armor vest. He's going to need to back up. He's got the health bubbles right in front of him. And there he goes. We'll go on board with Rain, though, who just caught fire on a rampage that's 10 straight kills after going actually one and three so this was a pretty even back and forth fight for the first few minutes but i, I feel like dw is just much more comfortable with this map oh that rocket hitting the ledge right there could cost them but we managed to get the kill and it's a smart play too oh wow two more killing sprees so three players on dw on a killing spree at once give you any idea of just how dominant they're, they're, they're turning out to be on this map. Look at that. Five to nothing belt. Basically all of the amp time going to DW. Just so comfortable. Hey, it looks like SOD maybe just less comfortable, less familiar on this map. Again, though, it is a very different type of map compared to deck. Almost exact opposites. Um, deck, a very tight, small map. Lots of wide open areas. This is a much more slower, methodical it's hard to call, I mean, deck is as old school as it gets, so I guess I can't say it's more of an old school style, but. Oh, that would have been a brilliant combo by Alpha. He doesn't complete it because he probably would have killed his teammates, so maybe for the best. Yeah, as I was saying, this is a map that certainly requires uh, a different set of skills than something like deck.
And that's one of the things to keep in mind that's always interesting in, in these... Now for now on a rampage. Did Rain die? Or is he still on, is he still on his rampage? He's got four deaths now. I don't know. I think he may have died. And look at that armor advantage. So it's 42, 100, 26, 150. Zero, 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 zero for SOD. And I mentioned this in the earlier SAS match, but yeah, that's something to keep in mind when you see one team take control of a map and you're like, man, how does how does a team taking control of a map all of a sudden allow them to crank out 20 or 30 kills like that? It's because every single fight, they've got essentially one and a half to double the health. And there's another Rampage, this time by Deity. So multiple players on a Rampage by DW. Deity now grabbing that amp. We'll go on board with him. So Deity looking to extend this spree. He can find one more person. I think that might do it. Now, one thing to keep in mind, too, this is a relatively big map, which means that it is easier to stay away, to just avoid the amp runner at times, and let that time run out. Give you a quick peek at the scoreboard here. Pretty even damage all across DW, so... You know, Alpha with the most kills, but I wouldn't say one player is having a monster game and carrying them. It's really spread out. And you can even check out the uh, the power-ups on the right <clears throat> as far as the pickups go. And you can kind of tell what position people are playing, right? Basically two players splitting the vest. Basically one player with pretty much all the belts. Interesting to note that the amps were all grabbed. So four different players have each grabbed one amp off of the, off of the, uh, the spawn. So I think they're basically all covering their own routes. And then when amp spawns, they're just all converging on it. And we've definitely seen that before, where DW has just had four red players all around that amp as soon as it spawns. Oh, Deity gets knocked off by Masta. Doesn't want to be too reckless here. And three blue players dive in on that amp. A little bit of damage from those homing rockets locking on. Big combo, and there's the dominating by Deity. Not the splashiest of killing sprees on this map. It's, it's all about efficiency, really. You've seen the amount of armor DW has been able to stack up on some of their players. Their killing sprees have been, a, you know, every bit about as much about staying alive as it is about, uh, you know, getting crazy multi kills or you know, going on on amp runs or anything like that. See Rain here in position for that that shield belt, but he's going to take some rocket damage. And he may go down. No, he manages to get the kill. So Rain, despite eating rockets and completely disintegrating his shield belt. Still in position. Great use of that link. He's got those vials right there. Another map where there's a ton of vials if you know where to go. They're a little bit out of the way on this map. A lot of, a lot of maps like to put vials right in the, in the, you know, sort of the natural path. Here, they're kind of tucked away. But a player that's familiar with the map can definitely st st stack up on them quickly, rather. So, you can see the score pretty one-sided here. We'll see what Rain can do to extend this, this spree. We do have Amp coming up soon. No armor for Rain. Actually, no armor for anyone on DW. Kind of a unique situation there. Deity, though, grabbing Amp. Down to 35 HP, so he did take some damage. Oh, and he goes down with the headshot, actually. So, Blue Team finally gets a reasonable opportunity for an Amp run. They've got 100 armor. We got an amp sniper rifle and 59x the pain. And now he just needs some targets. Oh, there's a couple nice shots on Rain. Was that actually the end of Rain's spree right there? He might have died before that. It didn't actually give me the pop-up. But some signs of life from SOD towards the end of this one. And they're definitely going to run out of time here. I don't think you can churn out 63 kills on this particular map in three minutes. But if anything, it's good practice. Um, again, it's the beginning of a long season. 
And this is one of the newer maps as far as it being played in competition. It's definitely not, a, it's actually one of the older maps as far as UT4 goes, but relatively new compared to things like deck and, and ranking and such. So a lot of teams maybe just want to get more time on it. So Clinic finally gets some power-ups under his belt. He's got an amp and some armor. Rain flying in and getting another multi-kill with rockets. He's just been exploding everyone with those rockets around that amp. However, Clinic though with a clean grab, getting a couple kills. And remember, we do have the 2v2 portion coming up right after this. So while it's probably out of time for him to come back and try to win this map, you know, if you're SOD, maybe you want to get some momentum going, get some confidence built. Um, they've certainly played better in the last couple minutes, maybe two to three minutes. I believe SOD's actually taken a, a positive net. They've certainly got better control of the power-ups. We've seen them maps, or, excuse me, uh, match power-ups on players. So in other words, stacking armor on top of an amp run like we just saw. So maybe getting their legs under them a little bit on this map. That said, they did win map one, so it gives them a little bit of a buffer. Uh, of course, certainly every point counts since that is your final rankings in this league. And it looks like these two are gonna split going into the 2v2 portion. One minute to go. Deity does have one more amp run in him. <laughs> nice patient play there. Just waiting, waiting for him to fall right into his crosshair. Give you a quick look at the scoreboard as we finish this one out. Another killing spree by Rain. You can see though, like the, the evenly spread damage like I pointed out before. No one player on DW dominating here. Everyone just uh, just kind of playing their game. The power-ups you can see completely one-sided. So really, I think what it comes down to, you know, SOD, of course, coming back and winning deck. DW running all over them on this map just shows how different different maps can play. And that's why it's intriguing to see, you know, which teams pick which maps, especially when you get into tiebreaker situations in 2v2 and duel. So DW looking awfully strong and really comfortable in Sid Castle. Each team taking now one point. 2v2 portion going to be a best of three for another coming up right after this. It looked like both teams' pings were pretty much fine, so I would expect them will probably play in the same hub, so we'll stick around here and keep an eye out for that. All right, while they're getting that up and running, I'm gonna take just a quick minute or two break. We'll be right back with you as soon as that server goes up.
All right, looks like server is up. We'll be jumping into that in just a moment here. Scratch that server is down. I think they're just, uh, I don't know if they're checking out pings, maybe they had to re-host to get some some of the settings proper, but uh, players are working on getting that up and running, so definitely expect to see this match up here in just a couple minutes. All right, loading into Codex. And here we go. DW versus SOD. This will be the 2v2 portion of this matchup. Again, that's going to be best of three for the third point in this matchup. Out of five potential, they split the 4v4 CDM map, so each team is taking one point for the rankings. Given this team, my guess would be that this is SOD's map pick. But I'm not entirely sure. Codex, of course, being UT99 map, so certainly not going to be any secret to anyone. In fact, this was a map that people dueled on back in UT99. Players already, and we will be jumping right into this one. Here is your countdown: three, two, one, and it's game time, baby. Connex Five bringing you the two v two portion of DW versus SOD, getting it kicked off. We just saw them split four v four maps, so very intriguing matchup. We won't be tying anything in two v two. It'll be best of three maps. First map. Again, I, I would say SOD probably has the familiarity advantage on this map. Of 
course, this room right here. Ooh, gets taken out just at the last second. Nice use of that link gun by Scandalous. Denies that 100 armor and gets the kill. And now DW with a quick lead. Almost a big combo there by Scandalous. I think he was afraid of killing his teammate. He's dead. Gives up the belt. So you look at that armor. Memphis running around with 121 HP. Clinic with 130 armor. We're going to look awfully well equipped. The fight over, uh, I guess this 100 armor will be the next thing to spawn. Clinic grabs it. So already stacked up, but... CW right now with no armor between the two. And Amp will be spawning in 7 seconds. The trick to Amp on this map is we'll, we'll pop right over to it. We got the 100 armor down here. This is that room we were looking at by Shock. Amp is kind of tucked away. It's in this like awkward spot. Not the easiest thing to jump to. Certainly not the easiest thing to grab and get away cleanly. So just because you're in control of this map doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be able to have a free reign of that Amp and go nuts with it. As it is though, SOD fighting back. It was 3-2. to two. They got four straight kills. So actually a surprisingly quiet amp run there, but still maintaining the lead. And in fact, it looked like DW got a, a self-termination there. Ooh, just missing that flat primary, but keeps him at bay more importantly in clinic still. That's all 150 of that armor. So if this 100 armor spawns in about 15 seconds, this vest up here, he'll be able to pass that to Memphis if he can maintain control of that room. Belt doesn't spawn for another 10 seconds afterwards, so they can definitely focus on one and the other. Oh, Mufin kills himself with rockets and down to a one, uh, one point score for DW. That can be uh, a bit demoralizing. You certainly don't want to go all the way back down to zero. You'd almost rather the other team score. So Belt up now and, and actually Mufin and Scandal is able to soak up both power-ups there. So SOD had control of the map and instead, DW circle around, kind of run them around in circles, and then end up sneaking through and grabbing both of those pickups. That could be huge. We do have the amp spawning soon. Scandalous is able to grab. We'll go on board with him. 150 armor and amp. This map is so... It's relatively small. It's really more than anything quick to traverse. So you can see some amp runs put out a ton of damage in a hurry on this map. You can see Scandalous on the hunt, just listening to footsteps, listening to his teammate call, call out what he sees, looking for the kill, gets a little bit of damage, actually a pretty pretty good chunk of damage on Memphis, going down that lift. Unfortunately for him, he shot him right down the lift. Oh, and Clinic with the, with the ambush, I guess, from behind, and the belt, so SOD now, coming right back into it. DW is fighting back. Some big kills there to take control right back into SOD's hands, and you can see the armor differential. Really kind of a, of a quick indication of, of, I guess, who's really controlling a map. In 2v2, it's hard to really deny weapons. You can pick one or two to a certain extent, but denying armors is crucial. Oh, and the bounce by the flat clinic. With the double kill with the flat primary. And uh, we do have amp spawning right now. So there's a nice wall run right there by Clinic showing it off. That's a new path for this version of the map. Scandalous, oh, Scandalous snuck around, grabbed the amp, but got ambushed to grab that for themselves and look to extend this lead. Ooh, there's a big amp sniper shot up close. Kind of a dangerous spot there. He does back out of it, so Clinic stays alive. Not much armor left. He does have the 
Vest coming up in 10 seconds. He may, with his shock rifle, decide to just kind of play defensive and lock them out. He does have shock ammo spawning as well. Memphis is right there with him. They're kind of blindly spamming at this point. He's not even really taking shots at anyone in particular. Scandalous a little bit late to the party. Does get one shot in on him. Not before clinic. Oh, and Scandalous actually takes out Mufin. So DW now with a couple of self kills. And there a teammate kill. Really not doing themselves any favors. Yeah, it said he got about 10 seconds left till the spell spawns. Clinic is in perfect position for it. Oh, and both players spawn right in front of him. That's tough against the flat cannon. There's one kill. Could easily follow it up with a second. Those flax shards just bounce all the way around. Yep, there's a second all the way around and down that hallway. Not uncommon to see flat primary double kills there. And armor solidly in SOD's control. And the, with the amp going to their hands as well, this could really be a chance for them to break this one wide open. Oh, the, the stomp damage. You know, one thing I've never tested is whether the stomp damage gets doubled when you have amp. Ooh, amp link on a fresh spawner. That's going to be not even fair. Even with only 28 HP, just not afraid to dive in there. Nice wall dodge there to get to the middle area without a, without leaving himself open to those sniper shots. Sniper, sniper not going to be a, a huge influence on this map compared to some of the others, but there's a couple of long shots across the map, or long, you know, angles, I suppose. You saw it come into play there, fighting people off of the off of the belt. Scandalous does manage to get away with some armor, so maybe he can make something happen here. We're, we're only just now at the halfway point of this one, so still lots of time left, but SOD looking awfully strong so far. Ooh, nice, nice uh, discipline there, not firing off that combo. Probably would have killed his teammate. We've seen that a couple of times already this game. Amp is up. Let's head over to it. Again, it's kind of an awkward amp to grab in this map. You really have to be in position ahead of time. Oh, Mufin takes him out. Now, this could be an opportunity here. You can get up there. How did the amp fall? How oh, the amp fell into the map? That's a new one on me. I don't think I'd seen that one before. Well, all right. Well, we're... <laughs> We're finding new and interesting ways to uh, to break things here today. So unfortunate for DW there. They had a chance. Mufin got the kill on Amp, had some armor. You can see them both running around with armor. DW has actually flipped control of this map. Now the question is, can they maintain it and can they turn it into some kills? So Mufin running around with Flak, which is great in this map. Probably one of the, if not the, uh, best 2v2 map for just pure Flak uh, chaos, really. Turning corners and just disintegrating people. But that said, that middle area, you really, you really need to have something else in your arsenal. There's one quick kill, another quick kill. Both blue players go down and he jumps off of the belt, but it looks like Scandalous was behind him and grabbed it. So again, control the map firmly in DW's favor now. Only down by 12, there's plenty of time on the clock. They just have to turn this into points. Oh, and Clinic chasing him down. So tough to get out of the line of sight of that stinger. Just chews him up. Camp now to Scandalous, so this could be key here. If he can get any amount of health and make something happen with this amp, he doesn't have to go nuts, he doesn't need a a multi-kill or anything necessarily, just control, like establish the map control if he can push them off of this next belt. Actually, the uh, the 100 armor vest is spawning next. If he can push that amp over to there, there's one kill. If he can establish control of that vest. Okay, maybe he's gonna take it to mid, try to push him off of the, ooh, off the belt. Unfortunately, the amp runs out right as he turns the corner into that flat cannon, falls away, falls off of the belt. Looking for the bait kill with that combo, but there's nobody going for it. He also announces his position. Big combo on both of them, but doesn't get a kill. Eats a flak ball. So big damage there by Scandalous, but unfortunately, 
They just weren't able to parlay that amp into any sort of real map control. They got a couple of kills. Um, and then it's right back to SOD owning those armors. So DW right now, both players less than 20 HP. That armor is going to help, but really needs to get some health bubbles underneath him. Oh, meanwhile, Clinic drops a flak ball right on his face. Amp doesn't spawn for 10 more seconds, so kind of curious to see him up there. Again, it's such an exposed area. Even that Stinger alt fire is going to do some AoE. And completely out of ammo, so Clinic has the amp, but nothing to really use it with. Even a second Enforcer would be deadly, but you can't drop Enforcers in this game. So he does pick up a Shock Rifle, able to push Mufin away from that Vest. Vest will be spawning in 10 seconds or so, so this will be a big fight over it. A nice patient combo with his last bit of ammo and a double kill with the Enforcer. That was huge by Clinic. Shock Rifle coming around the corner. Looking for that. Oh, the ambush, though. Mufin with some flack of his own. Taking him down, but Clinic wins that battle, and that's what that extra armor will do for you. So three minutes to go. Still a pretty close one here, but, you know, 17 points in a 2v2 going to be much harder to make up, obviously, than a 4v4. So SOD looking pretty strong in this one. DW's had their moments. I mean, they've taken control of this map a couple times. They just weren't able to clamp down and really turn that control into kills. And I think a lot of that has to do with just uh, map knowledge and like, comfort on the map. I mean, again, this is SOD's map pick. Didn't surprise me to hear that, um, given the players that are playing it. And just having that one extra step, whenever you whenever you kill someone and you're already turning to face where they're going to respawn, you can turn one kill into two, two into three. It just made such a big difference. Clinic turns that corner, double kill with that flat in mid. And I think that's probably going to do it with two minutes to go. After this amp run ends, we'll take a quick look at the scoreboard to get a recap of kind of what we've seen here. So Scandalous actually putting out the most damage on the map. You can see him, though, with five belts. Good amount of amp time for him, but overall, SOD really just, just outputting more damage, ultimately. Um, certainly, the amp runs mattered. I mean, three more belts is pretty big in 2v2. 100 armor vests were pretty much even, which is kind of surprising. But like we said, like DW definitely took control of the map a couple times. They just weren't able to do much with it. So even when they were able to grab a couple of vests in a row, and maybe even throw in a shield belt in there, they were mostly just kind of playing against the map. And so credit DW, or excuse me, credit SOD as well for whenever DW did take control of the map, able to stay alive, kind of back up, have a plan B, regroup, if you will. Oh, Clinic kisses Scandalous with a smiley. <laughs> and then kisses himself with a smiley. Ooh, almost hits the falling sniper shot. That would have been a nice shot. Instead, eats some flak. Scandal is standing in there. Gets himself an amp. Uh, so again, this is best of three. So map one looks like it's going to go to SOD. Uh, unless Scandalous can somehow spawn like a Zark rifle or something. I don't see them making up 25 frags. So map one will go to SOD. This was their map pick. Map two will be DW's map pick. And uh, we'll see what happens there. We've had so many tiebreakers today. You almost just presume that we're going to see a map three. But uh, we'll see what happens coming up. I don't think we're going to have to bounce around to any hubs any, at any point during this matchup, so it should be rolling between maps very quickly.
All right, DM Cannon, you want to talk about a map that is completely different. Basically one big room, very shock and sniper heavy. About as different from Codex as you can get. Doubt you're going to see nearly as many flat primary kills. But we'll find out because players are readying up and jumping right into it. All right, here is your countdown. Three, two, one, and it's game time, baby. Connex five. We are on cannon for map two. It just set up Mufin with the early defensive rocket kill. DW jumping out to an early lead. Looking to avenge their loss. SOD looked. Oh, and another self kill. DW has taken negative points so many times already in this 2v2 matchup between killing themselves or killing their teammate. The clinic with the double kill with that link, turning it back around three straight kills plus the self kill. We do have 12 seconds till both belt and vest spawn. We're gonna head on up to, up to belt. Not in like, this is what I was talking about that looks kind of similar to that Sid Castle belt where it's in sort of a little bunker. And kind of surprised to see nobody there ahead of time. Typically you've got one or two players waiting for it to spawn. You can see you can sort of play it defensively and, and keep the other players out, lock them out of it. Oh, we gotta be careful on, so you see that cannon down there. For anybody who doesn't know, this cannon is uh, the reason the map is named as such. When it's green, it's armed. When somebody shoots it, it will blast anyone that's on it off of the map, and they'll go for a swim and get eaten by a big-ass monster. You can see Scandal is able to jump on it. So what people will sometimes do is either shoot it themselves or have their teammates shoot it. And then when it's kind of in that in that refire, that like cooldown period when it's red, then they'll jump on, grab that amp, and try to get off before the other team can blast them right off of it. So, Definitely a big uh, feature of this map, something to keep an eye out for. And if I go to third person mode when people are around that amp, that'll be why, because that's such a dangerous, it's basically an opportunity to get instantly killed. And the key there too is if someone grabs that amp and gets blasted off the map, that amp just leaves the gameplay, or the game field, I suppose you might say. So it's completely out of play. Memphis with a double kill. Again, a much more wide open map. Obviously DW preferring that style of play. Clinic in Memphis, though, certainly not going to be any slouches when it comes to sniping uh, and running around and doing that, doing, you know, the kind of the hit scan gameplay. So, oh, dangerous move, Memphis, right now, running around the top of that, uh, I guess, kind of bridge wall area. You can do some really clever things on this map up there, but if you get hit by anything, you will fall off the map. It's one more use. So, you have these jump boots back there. Obviously, they're useful for traversing the map, also, really useful for not falling off the map. You can, so there's a couple of ways, if you get blasted off the map on that cannon, if you have jump boots, you can pretty easily save yourself. Um, there are a couple of tricks you can do even if you don't have jump boots, but they require very precise timing and a little bit of luck as well. All right, so we do have amp up on that cannon. You see players all over the map. But again, this is the whole map. It's a pretty wide open room. Memphis is gonna grab it. Nobody even contests them. So a bit of a, of a bold move there. Gets away with it, and at this point, honestly, stealing that amp is kind of a win. So if I'm him, really, ooh, drops it in the water. Now, that's actually going to be a dangerous grab if DW tries to go down, and they do. So, I don't know, the SOD gave up one kill. I would have probably tried to just back up and save it, but in the end, they only get two kills off of it, says DW, so... Not the worst trade-off there. Better than DW grabbing it clean and going on a run. As it is still a dead even match between these two. Oh, the Flak versus Shock and Memphis manages to come out ahead with the close range Shock primary. It's not easy to do against Flak in that area. <clears throat> We do have Clinic now, though. The only one with any armor. 
100 armor vest spawn soon. It's in that back area where Scandalous is, right behind those, uh, those arches. So that and the shield belt both spawning in close quarters areas, really the only places on this map where you'll see a lot of flak and rockets come into play. Or perhaps where you'll most likely see them come into play. There's the kill. Amp is up. We're going to head over to Amp right now and see who can grab it. You can see Scandalous again. Pretty consistent strategy. He's going to fire off the gun. Trigger the cannon himself, firing off at it. Oh, almost a perfectly timed rocket. Gets the air rocket, but bounces himself off. Has to be careful. Trying to grab that belt. It's not up for another couple seconds. He hears it spawn and going to dive right at it. Almost eats a combo, but manages to kind of get away a little bit lucky there. Ooh, lucky for him again. Gets bounced back towards the health. Maybe he's just going to grab that and move forward. Memphis did grab that 100 armor, though, so let's go on board with him. We'll even take a quick peek at the scoreboard where we've got a little bit of a lull. So look at that amp time. Completely in DW's favor. Two to three, though, in belts. So belts and armor are all pretty much even. Just a little bit more damage for DW. Uh, that said, SOD is still on top by one. We're just about a third of the way into this one. Ooh, just dodging that combo is Memphis, but he does take the rocket and another goes down to 34 HP. He's going to be one shot away from death. Actually, yeah, I was about to say the belt already spawned. Scandalous grabbed it. Um, we're going to have the amp spawning any second now. You can see Scandalous up on top. This time he's got Memphis daring him to turn that corner and try to grab it. Clinic sneaking in behind. And they may try to focus fire on Scandalous while they've got him trapped. Mufin's going to be coming around the side, and actually Clinic grabs it and gets away clean. So SOD now down by two, looking for an opportunity. Ooh, and DW is being oddly stealthy right now. Clinic was on the hunt, running around looking for him. Couldn't quite find him. So all in all, not a ton of damage coming out from that amp run. And in fact, Mufin turns the corner, blasts him with that flak, extends it to a three frag lead. Belt is up. And it looks like Scandalous in position. So now, DW with a chance to make a run. Both players over 100 armor. Nothing spawning for 15 seconds. This is their opportunity to be aggressive. It's raining down from above. So there you go. Back up to a five frag lead. Oh, going for the midair rock. I'm actually really surprised he didn't pull out the shock there and try to knock him off the map. But it worked out for him. Knocked him down. Juggled him in that tight little uh, corridor area. Oh, and the snipe by Clinic, though. Waiting for him to dive over to that amp. Let's see what happens. We've got Mufin waiting to fire off that cannon if anyone grabs it. Oh, he gets killed right on it. It actually fell down into the water, I think. There we go, the blast off by Memphis, trying to catch himself on that ledge. Doesn't quite happen. We didn't really catch it there, but that was the first cannon fire of the match. Already halfway through this one before we saw the first person get sent, so. These teams have been pretty careful up to this point. Scandalous with the Amp Enforcer. That's still pretty scary, but yeah, definitely going to want to get a link gun in him. And smart play here by Scandalous. You saw him basically body blocking, just standing on top of the, those health packs. And that's what allowed him to win that fight. And DW now really taking control of this map. Oh, you see him almost getting knocked off the map. Dangerous, dangerous to go down there. There are, what is it, six or eight health files down there. So, I mean, it can be a pretty significant boost, even with the amp not there. But again, when you're one shot away from going down, especially when you don't have health, have uh, jump boots, 
A dangerous play. Oh, and he eats Clinic's Goo Trap. Nice job there by Clinic to defend himself preemptively. All right, let's head over to this amp. Is it spawning in two seconds? Both teams very aware of that fact. Everybody's set up. Scandalous grabs it and gets away clean. Scandalous, Scandalous has done a great job so far this map, grabbing that amp and getting away untouched. It's so difficult to do on this map. You really have to kind of play a little bit of peekaboo and defend yourself. And we're down to the last five minutes. SOD still has time on the clock. An amp in their hands, but they definitely need to get a couple of kills to whittle down that lead. Oh, and he's down again. The amp runner running out of ammo, down to 21 HP, but manages to get the kill. Belt will be up soon, so they're right in position for it. Oh, and Clinic killing his teammate. This time, SOD answers. DW had gotten uh, a couple of team kills, I think, last game and saw, got one this game earlier. SOD returns the favor. Fighting over that. 100 armor vest. There's a nice combo to take him down. And a double kill for Clinic on a killing spree. And it couldn't come at a better time. They're pulling within five now. Again, still tons of time on the clock. DW was looking dominant a few minutes ago. And now SOD has fought their way back into this one. We have 100 armor again spawning in about 10 seconds. Clinic's probably just going to hang out by it. Grab that and then try to grab the amp. Looks like uncontested. He's still got 15 seconds to the belt, so I'm actually a little surprised to see DW so heavily interested in, in holding that shield belt area. This amp is actually up, and so we could see a free grab. Now, it looks like everybody's more interested in this shield belt, which is kind of surprising to me. Oh, the nice flank there. They get they get the kills there, and then now amp is up. Is Mufin going to go for it? He's going to risk grabbing it? He does. He steals it away. Only has... Enforcer, so Mufin may just be content to kind of hide away. See him running away, trying to survive. Oh, and Clinic does finally catch up to him, and Clinic's probably going to be able to grab that amp. He goes up that lift, and here we go. Clinic down by two with the amp sniper rifle in his hands. He has 150 armor. He can take that shot. Doesn't really matter. The SOD has fought their way back into it. One shot away. He's got what he needs. Oh, the amp link goes down to Mufin. Mufin able to defend himself. All right, so every armor, so much more important now. One point game, we've got the vest in Clinic's hands. Memphis with a little bit, but look at this belt. We've got Scandalous set up up top. Oh, Mufin fell down into the water. That's gonna get them a free kill, but it does give Scandalous a little bit of a, a distraction to grab that, that belt and get away for free. 10 seconds till the vest spawns. I would be surprised if we don't see four people fighting over it. It's another kill by Scandalous, making great use of that belt. Oh, and another one from behind. So really just using Mufin as bait there. Turning that corner, getting the kills. He's probably going to save that armor from Mufin. If he does just that. Oh, and three quick shots on Clinic. Pulling back into a two-frag lead. We do have the amp spawning soon. 2v1 fight. And right now, DW is doing a great job of singling out SOD players. Fighting them 2v1. Amp is up now. This will be the last... Real amp. Oh, he's stuck on the... Oh, he almost goes down. So you can see that. The danger of being knocked off. Really had no option. Oh, and they take him down on it. Amp is still up. We'll go back over to it. Everybody getting knocked off. Nobody able to pick it up. And somehow nobody getting blasted off the map either. Scandalous finally gets away with it with only 4 HP. Got to be careful here. He doesn't want to drop it to the other team, especially down to a five frag lead. Clinic has it in his hands with a sniper rifle. Could be dangerous, but he's only got 35 health. There's the one clutch kill that he needed to open things up. He's got a minute and a half to go. He can't really afford to be careful here. Belt, excuse me, uh, Vest is up now. Looking for the health that's not there, but he's only got five seconds left on that amp. There's one shot, pulls within four. Belt's not up for another minute as Scandalous already grabbed it. There's basically no power-ups left. Until uh, until the belt with about 20 seconds to go. They might just hold that back half of the map and wait for that belt to come back up. But they still have to find a way to get some shots off. They're still down by four. 
Oh, Scandal is hyper aggressive here. Running in, we'll go on board with him. He's got the belt. He's the only one with any significant amount of armor. Trying to close this one out. There's the kill, double kill by the red team. And that may do it up by five. Three shocks in a row and that should put it away with the best in his hands up by six. And Amp won't really play a factor in this one in the last 10 seconds. Nice combo up top. That's a great call out probably by his teammate telling him exactly where he was. So here we go, closing it out, five seconds left. And DW able to hang on to this one. So there we go, another map three tiebreaker coming up next. All right, tiebreaker map here will be DM Focus. We saw SOD dominating Codex for their pick, fighting back against DW on their pick on Cannon, but DW hangs on to win, all coming down to this. The third point of this matchup, up for grabs in this tiebreaker map. Here we go, the third and deciding map in this 2v2 match. Here is your countdown, three, two, one, and it's game time, baby. Con X5 here. We will determine once and for all who gets this point. We've seen them go back and forth. Another tiebreaker today. Seems to have been the theme so far. Here we go, 2v2, DW versus SOD. Shots raining out back and forth. I suppose ringing out rather. And the first kills on the board for Mufin. Giving them an early lead, but the way these two teams have been playing, who knows what's gonna happen in this one. There's the answer with the stinger. And ties it right back up. We've seen that a lot today, the early round. Oh, and the answer back to take the lead. So we've seen the early game, um, you know, finisher weapons, Stinger and Link, chasing people down, being extra aggressive. This time they basically just take turns. In the end, goes back to nothing. We are 3-3 three, three, and Memphis able to grab that belt and get away clean. Takes a little bit of damage there, but now he's got a chance to take out Scandalous, who hangs in there, takes him down to five HP. So actually a pretty nice job by Scandalous. Hitting a couple of sniper shots to negate that pickup and send Memphis packing. Does get the kill though. 
But now DW running around with a bit of an armor advantage. Amp will be spawning any second now. Kind of a unique position for Amp on this map. Mufin does have jump boots. It's so important to control jump boots on this map. Some teams tend to neglect them a little bit. They're kind of out of the way. You have to jump down and kind of away from the 100 armor vest. But it's such a huge key. And being able to grab that, uh, that Amp anytime you need. So he's going to take the Amp and armor. Ooh, over to that belt and get destroyed by Clinic. Huge combos coming out to defend that territory. Amp pretty much dissipates, but nice defensive hold there by SOD. Almost looking like it was capture the flag. And sort of do that on this map, especially on uh, on those power-ups. Because they're in those little, they're kind of in, in separate disparate rooms, right? So you got a couple entrances. You can back it up, play almost like some CTF defenders. Each choose an entrance, and oh, Memphis with a chase down with that flag. We saw SOD looking dominant on map one with the flak. Again, a very flak heavy map on Codec. Definitely played in their favor. DW chose a more open map in Canon. This is kind of in between the two, I guess. It's definitely not as tight as Codex, but it's definitely one where especially fighting over those, those power-ups. Things like shot combos and, uh, and flak primer can come up huge. So if I had to guess, I would say SOD maybe has a slight advantage here based on style of play. Mimbus on the run survives. Amp is up. There's those jump boots coming into play again. This time Clinic's got it. You can get to that amp without jump boots, but you have to take damage, and it's so vulnerable. You essentially have to turn your back on your opponents. One kill with that link, two kills with that amp link. Oh, it turns the corner. has got another spawner there. So that's the interesting thing. Not only does the shield belt spawn there, which is obviously a key, there's a couple of spawn points there too. So you know, sometimes people, or see people run there looking for uh, fresh spawners to take down as well. With a 44 damage from the Amp Enforcer. Devastating. Mufin does get the kill on Clinic, but not before going down. He actually gets a double kill with 6 HP, so great job by Mufin defending himself. So we have a ton of time until any power up spawn. We'll take a quick look at the scoreboard to see how things are going. Just about a third of the way into this one. Overall, pretty even. I mean, you look at damage, you look at 100 armor vests are to DW's favor, shield belts are to SOD's favor, amp time relatively even. And uh, that's how we end up with a three frag lead SOD with just a slight advantage. Oh, nice steal and nice escape with those boots by Mufin. Oh, eats a combo from the side though, Memphis. Good job helping his teammates out in flak. Huge, this time for DW's favor. Now both power-ups are up. The only player with jump boots, as we see Memphis grabbing that belt, 100 armor going to Mufin. Mufin's the only one with boots, so he's gonna dive right up there. Only four HP though, he's gotta be careful here. There are the health packs, there we go. He needed those badly. Now he can go on the hunt. So he's going to be playing. Oh, fighting against two people with armor. Big sniper shot on Clinic. Scandalous gets the kill and ties it right back up. Is he going to make the jump up through the porthole there? It looks like he's not. He's going to save those boots. Maybe look for some health. Nice work jumping up there and vaulting up. He's still saving that jump boot uh, charge for, I guess, kind of an emergency situation. Big damage with, the, uh, with that amp link. Another rocket finishes him off, and Memphis stands in there and gets the kill. And the double kill, so Memphis answering right back. We do have belt spawning soon. One player there for blue. Everyone else kind of spread out, so it's one-on-one -on, -one on, on it. Memphis able to grab it and stand in there, and that was a huge grab because he was down to 32 HP. And those health bubbles were already taken. Nice combo by Memphis. 
answering back. Newfin had gotten himself out of trouble a little while ago, but Memphis now answering back. SOD up to a three frag lead. Still got 14 seconds till the amp spawns. Kind of surprised to see Memphis diving in there. A little bit reckless, cost him a death. And now down to a one frag lead. Amps up in five seconds. Boots are up as well, so we may see. Who is this? Mufin? Mufin grabs the vest and the boots. I don't think anyone else is going to beat him there. So yeah, Scandalous, you can see, coming around the backside to cut off Clinic. That's going to give Mufin a free, safe grab of that amp on top of his armor, and that could be huge. He does have a sniper rifle, but opting to shoot Link Primary. Kind of interesting. Oh, turns that corner. Has the Link on him, and oh, nice job by SOD. You saw them basically just converging on the amp runner there. So still just a slight lead down to two points for SOD. We've basically been dead even. I mean, SOD took a two to three frag lead, what, like four minutes ago? And since then, we've been just back and forth. So it'll be interesting to see if anyone can break open any kind of advantage. 15 seconds till the belt spawns. We still got 30 seconds till amp, so let's head over to the shield belt. You can see what it looks like to try to attack it from mid. Clinic just throwing fiery hot death balls straight down range and a ban Okay, so SOD giving up the belt area to go grab that vest. Memphis ends up getting it, and now they're going to circle back around. Clinic ends up grabbing the belt, so SOD very confidently just running around the map. Kind of surprised DW didn't cut them off at either of those pickups. Amp is up, and Clinic has jump boots, but he goes down. Scandalous taking him out. That could have been a big kill because he had an opportunity with armor to grab that amp and go on a run. Now Mufin has jump boots, but only 6 HP. Really no one in position to grab this amp. I think Clinic may jump up top with the with the impact hammer. So he took 40 damage there, grabbed it, jumped down, rehealed, and there you go. Amp sniper rifle coming to play. Two in a row. And there's the double kill off of the belt. Belt's not up anytime soon though. So we'll be happy to look for spawners and try to get more on the board. Scandalous with the heads up play, taking them down with the stinger. Not much time left on that amp, but we do have belt coming up right now, and nobody from SOD anywhere near the belt. That's a little bit of a misplay there. I'm not sure they lost track of it or were just caught out of position or what. And the falling headshot there by Scandalous had, what, 5 HP? It was at 8 HP. Grabs belt and gets a kill. Probably should not have been able to do either of those things. There's the kills coming out around the corner. Still a five frag lead for SOD. But DW getting away with a couple there. Staying in this game. As we get to the last five minutes, only a three frag difference. Belt doesn't spawn for 20 more seconds. 100 armor is up now. We'll head over there. You can see Clinic waiting on it. Also has boots. 10 seconds till the amp spawns. He could head over to amp. We're going to have amp about five seconds before belt. Nice rockets. Stick to that. They're now a four frag lead again. He's gonna grab some ammo. He's using his next to last boot jump, so he has. Oh, actually, he's gonna lose his opportunity. Scandalous sneaks in front of him and grabs that that amp right in front of him. Oh, but he takes it out, grabs it for himself, and now he's gonna take that over. Mufin will meet him with the oh with the shield belt, but tanks that shot, takes him out. Amp neutralized. Still 15 seconds left to go. Mufin's got. An opportunity here to come back into it. Only down by one. Gets in his face with the flak primary. Huge risk by Mufin. Gets the kill. Ties it up. And right now, this map is just an utter chaos. Nobody in control of it. So who can keep their organization? It looks like EW right now. Double teaming clinic has him locked in a corner. Notice what Mufin did there. He didn't just dive in with only 48 HP. He's trying to like find an angle. Ends up trading with Clinic, which isn't the best. Scandalous goes down now with the follow-up kill by Clinic. So still a tie game. Belt's going to spawn in three seconds. 
You do have Memphis in there with a shock rifle. It's going to be a big advantage. He'll try to push people out, but Scandalous takes him down. So that was a smart move because everybody had died. Everyone was weak. It was almost like the very beginning of the game. So opening with the finishing weapon actually works out in that scenario when you know everyone's kind of reset. Earns them a belt, control of the map, and now a two-frag lead for DW coming right back at him. And now DW turning it on. They've got full map control, turning out some kills, trying to put this one away because they know that SOD could answer right back if they don't. Oh, Clinic with a self-kill with a flak against the wall. Nice juke by Scandalous. More Stinger kills coming out. Clinic went around and grabbed that amp. This could be the opportunity. The, the amp run was a huge game changer earlier when DW was able to tie it back up and go on a run. See him lining up the shot, trying to be so careful not to, not to shoot his teammate. Belt spawns now, so not getting a ton of kills off of his amp. Oh, but Scandalous dives right into a clinic. So patient there, just opting to control the map with that amp rather than trying to get some kills. So will that pay off? Now he's got that extra armor. He goes and gets one kill. He's going to get ambushed by Link. Gets the double kill. Pulls within three. Clinic right now. Pulling his team right back into it. Full flat primary. One more shot will do it. And another opportunity with another spawner in front of him. The double kill. Pulls back within one. SOD now fighting back. They've got map control. Vest in their control. Amp won't be up for another 40 seconds. Jump boots are up. But he's going to opt to head over to the belt. Which is still got about 20 seconds on it. So we could just see... An extended fight over this belt, and this could be what determines the game. Is this fight over belt right here? Clinic goes down to some flak. So still a two-frag lead for DW, and they are in position well ahead of this belt. Mufin's trying to fight them off of the amp, but Clinic circles around. They're both weak. DW is both weak. They both go down. Tie game, and now they gave up control of the belt, and they may have given up this amp as well. It will be spawning. They've got the 100 armor in their control, but did any of them grab boots? They did. Oh, and he gets up. Scandalous kills Mufin and can't get the amp. It's still up and he's out of jump boots. Scandalous with the team kill and then gets bounced off of the amp. That was a huge turnaround. Now Clinic's got the amp in his hands with a two frag lead. That could have been such a big swing moment either direction. SOD storming right back into it. So a minute to go, and the lead, I think Clinic is going to be aggressive here and push over for this belt. And there he goes, a 2v1. That was a smart play. They knew they had him 2v1. If, that's, if that was the 2v2, maybe he backs off and doesn't take that fight. Oh, big, big shot on Mufin there. He does get the kill to pull back with N2, but Clinic's going to be on the run. Scandalous right in his face with that stinger. We've seen that come through big. They both go down, still a three frag lead for SOD. And you're gonna look for Scandalous here to try to get a sniper rifle in his hands and make something happen. He's not gonna have any real power-ups at his disposal though. The double team one player, Clinic's got some armor across the way. We're gonna look for a big shot, flat primary. He's been so big in this area. Another one comes out, if they can get this kill, it could pull him right back in instead. Clinic stands strong, gets two kills, and I think that's gonna seal the deal. Clinic was locked in that corridor, had Flack on one side, Link on the other. Came away with it, and then a double kill by Memphis across the way seals the deal. So that one was so back and forth. I would like to see a graph of kind of like who was in the lead. There were so many lead changes in the second half. That was, as soon as I thought one team was going to run away with it, the other one came back. Oh, man. Dead even matchup between these two so far. So we've seen the 4v4 happen. That was the 2v2. Went to a tiebreaker. We're going to wait for this dual match to pop up now. I'm going to send you to the AFK screen for just a second. We'll, we'll see while, uh, while we wait for this instance to pop up, but I think we'll be getting started here shortly.
All right, indeed, it does look like the server's up. I'm gonna take one quick uh, bite of some food and then we'll jump right into this one. Right, moving right along, we are into the dual portion of this matchup. PW versus SOD has been dead even so far back and forth. These teams have gone. That third map tiebreaker in the 2v2 was a nail biter, and now we've got a couple of best of three duels to finish things off. And then, of course, stick around. We've got one more matchup to close the day out afterwards. So SOD right now with a 2-1 to one points lead in those, uh, I guess, ranking points, if you will, uh, the Space Bucks for your TPL. Of course, those determining the final rankings at the end of the season. So like we've seen the last couple of seasons, every single one of those points matters. It's easy to lose track of them kind of early on in the season. You know, maybe think, oh, you drop a 2v2 here, a duel there, no big deal. But we've seen dead, dead even races at the end of the season where, uh, you know, one, two, three points is the difference between, you know, maybe second place and fifth place or something like that. And we've seen some really, really even finishes both between the Epic and Challenge divisions, especially last season. If you'll recall, season one, actually, Epic division, first and second place separated, I believe, by one point. So every one of these matches matters. And we'll be live with this one right about now-ish. All right, here is your countdown. Three, two, one, and it's game time, baby. Connex Five bringing you the last, I guess, section of this matchup. Repeat versus AGV, first duel between these two teams. SOD took the 2v2, so two points to one so far in this matchup. Here on DM Solo, this will again be best of three. Ooh, the close range flak by repeat dove right in against that sniper rifle of AGV. He's going to respawn by rocket, so he'll have that to defend himself with. I feel like the theme for today has been flak. There's been an odd amount of clutch flak primary shots in every game type so far. See that flat balls bouncing around back and forth, basically trying to corral each other. And there's two big flat primaries by repeat, just continuing on with the theme. Turns the corner, can't quite get the follow up. So he does give up 100 armor there, but obviously uh, we'll take the kill any day. So be up top. Nice jump by AGV. It's showing some, some real familiarity with this map. Both players are moving around this map very well. This is a real kind of playground for the movement in this game. So the difference between good and great players in this map is often their movement and just how well they can uh, move around. And more flak 
So this is a map where flat can certainly come into play. You can see there's some, some close quarters. You can ambush people a ton right along with that whole movement uh, capability. The fact that you can close the gap. But still, I'm kind of surprised how much uh, flat has come into play. Five seconds till the belt spawns. Looks like AGV is going all in on it. Rocket's coming out. May have knocked him off of it and stolen it. He did just take it right in front of him to repeat. Untouched, however. So both players just bouncing around each other, somehow missing. Repeat finally decides to bail out. You can see his movement here. Trying to be uh, trying to be sneaky and get away. Maybe trying to get some armor under his belt. The defensive shock ball going to give him just enough time to get away. And he goes right over the top. Oh, he misses the jump. He was trying to go into the window, trying to be evasive. AGV made him pay for missing that. Gets the kill. Now he's on the board with a chance. Oh, looking for more. That shock ball went right between his legs. But he does have the link trained on him. And barring another... Well, actually, there's a nice flak ball by repeat. Able to survive. And earns himself 100 armor off screen there. So that was actually a really big win there by repeat. AGV standing in there looking for the kill. Left him out of position when he had to retreat. Oh, and the rockets by repeat. Perfect timing there. Grabs the belt and up to a 4-1 lead. Repeat, you can see looking hyper aggressive right now. I think he knows he has such a big armor advantage. He wants to try to close that gap. He wants to force a fight. And there it is. Double rockets. Bounces him up. Pins him to the wall. Blasts him. Up to a four frag lead as we approach the halfway point of this map. Oh, big combo, but somehow AGV gets away with two HP. Oh, and he actually leaves an easy shot for repeat. Misses the easy one, hits the hard one. Of course, I've been there. In any case, he hits. Oh, and there's the big flat primary again. How many kills? Is that four kills? Yeah, four kills with the flat primary. Only one kill for the shock. And another shred. Right now, repeat putting on an absolute show with the flat primary. I'd be curious to find out what the next map is. Uh, from what I hear, this is repeat's map pick. Curious what AGV picked. And I'm, and I'm curious if he was thinking about things like weapon selection, because right now, repeat is dominating him with the flat primary. There are some maps. I mean, there's some maps that are more or less uh, conducive to that kind of play style. Curious to see if AGV picked against that in the next map. Oh, the flat ball there through the grate. And then there's the rocket kill. And belt will be up in two seconds. And repeat right now, just absolutely dominating this map now. Yeah, Rocket's coming out. So actually pretty good damage by AGV there. Um, but repeat, I, I mean, that's the benefit you have, right? That's the luxury, the luxury you earn by controlling the map. You can take that extra rocket, survive, stand in there and get the kill and push it up to a nine frag lead. AGV knows he did some damage though. Um, unfortunately for him, Repeat was able to grab a ton of armor between that fight and this one. So he's going to look pretty comfy here. Cozying up to that shield belt. Actually, he might just track him down. The belt spawns in 15, but... Oh, nice circle around. So Repeat figured that AGV was going to go for that 100 armor. And in fact, he is. Makes him pay. He might catch him a second time on it. There it is with the headshot, just baiting him into the mousetrap. Repeat, no remorse. <laughs> that was pretty dirty. I actually think he meant to jump over to it. But sometimes, sometimes improvising on the fly can make you less predictable. He dodges those flat balls. You see the smiley face is just peeking at him. And there is the Rampage repeat, still looking strong. (laughs) 
<laughs> so another combo comes out. Reapy pushing it to a 15 frag lead. So this one's going to be a little out of reach now for AGV. But again, very curious to find out what it looks like in map two. <laughs> oh, repeat there. Three snipers in a row just standing in. He's also been doing a really great job of anticipating the spawn. So whether it's AGV making noise or repeat uh, just... Oh, with the prediction. AGV with the air rocket, but also kills himself. Gotta feel like that's just the way this map is going, but... But being a best of three, I mean, you can't let one map beat you twice, right? So that's gonna be on AGV to, to kind of get himself mentally ready for map two. Take a quick look at the stats. I mean, nothing super insane numerically, but Five kills with the flak, two or six with the rocket launcher. So 11 of his kills coming with the projectile-based weapons. Repeat really just bouncing them around. And that's not necessarily a given. This is one of those maps you can kind of play in a few different ways. So interesting to see that style of play excelling here. Also kind of interesting given the, uh, it was kind of the exact opposite of the 2v2 portion where we had DW favoring the hitscan heavy maps and SOW, or excuse me, SOD. It was the first time I've done that. <laughs> SOD, especially on Codex, looking really good in those close range kind of flat heavy maps. Of course, different players playing, but you can really see the different play styles uh, in effect through the, the course of one match. Flak balls coming around the corner, not quite connecting. I think that's the most flak I've seen repeat miss this game. So a AGV trying to make something happen, maybe build himself a little bit of uh, confidence or momentum coming into map two. Completely different map. Again, this is this is repeat's map pick. We've definitely seen people come back. I mean, we've seen so many map threes so far today. It's certainly uh, you know despite the score. Got to get yourself mentally prepared. But map one going to repeat, getting himself the one map advantage, trying to close things out strong. Or will we see yet another tiebreaker? We'll find out soon. And very curious to find out what map gets voted here. Hey, it looks like the North American community finally rolled out of bed and joined us in chat. <laughs> right as we get to the five hour mark. Appreciate the punctuality, fellas. <laughs> On the plus side, it's almost five o'clock central time, right? Or excuse me, five o'clock. Yeah, it's almost four o'clock Eastern. Eh, it's always five o'clock somewhere. Always a good excuse for a quarantine here too. All right, players are ready. 
Map two will be Leah. And here is your countdown. Three, two, one. And it's game time, baby. Con X5 bringing the map two between these two. Repeat look dominant on map one on solo. Largely on, uh, on his flat play. So he's got to be pretty happy with this map choice by AGV. Now, Solo is a map that can really punish you if you're not super familiar and comfortable with it, especially from a movement perspective. But this is another map. If your flat primary is on, if Repeat is going to hit that same uh, level of damage that he did in the first map, this is going to be a very difficult game for AGV. More rockets coming out. Repeat showing. Uh, while he did hit some crazy flak in the first map, he did have, I think, what, five, six kills with rockets, so certainly pretty much just looking on fire with everything at this point. Oh, there's some goo to eat out, or eat into, not out of, eating into his armor. I suppose if you took someone's armor, you could, like, eat some, like, bisque or something out of it, right? So, Repeat going to be running around pretty much even health and armor at this point. However, that two-frag lead going to be huge, especially on a map like this. We've seen earlier in the day, it's not the easiest map to close that gap on. So once someone has a lead, I mean, I think you have, obviously anyone who's winning is going to be an advantage because the clock is on your side. But in a map like this, you can really uh, be evasive. It's an even bigger advantage. Ooh, rocket misses. There's another one that doesn't miss in 170 damage between those two rockets. And another one repeat right now, just looking like a Quake player, just smacking them in the face with rocket after rocket. Up 3 nothing a couple minutes into this one. Oh, repeat. Nice patience there. Showing a little more versatility. You know, he can snipe as well. He just doesn't want to. <laughs> so smart control. I mean, you're going to see that on Leah. Um, such an important focal point is that 100 armor and then, and then the shock rifle below it. We do have that shield belt up and AGV steals it, but eats some rockets in the process. So AGV, though, does take that belt away. Repeat has 100 armor, but no belt, which is key. And with that extra health on top, AGV there actually had a little bit of an opportunity, but instead eats some damage. He's going to be hanging out, waiting for that vest, and actually Repeat concedes it. I'm kind of surprised there. Actually, I think he was turning the corner and trying to flank and just a little bit short. Shots coming out back and forth. Rockets being traded. AGV down to 15 HP and repeat on a spree with that finishing snipe. Nice shot from across the map. So another belt for repeat. Uh, okay, actually... Three to one. So AGV has picked up the belt, and AGV has actually done a pretty good job of circling around to control 100 armor vest as well. The last couple of minutes, Repeat's actually been on the run a bit. He's taken as much damage as he has all match. Down to 23 HP. A couple of Enforcer shots could take him out if AGV can close that gap. He may get a free 100 armor out of it, though, so doesn't get the kill there, but at least... A little bit of armor control and repeat now still kind of hiding away with 48 HP. You can see him ducking around, listening for those footsteps and just trying to find his way to any health bubbles that he can.
they saw the halfway point. Again, repeat taking map one. So AGV facing, I guess you wouldn't say elimination, but on the bubble here, trying to force the tiebreaker map repeat, trying to close things out and get one more point for DW. AGV circling around. So this is maybe as big of a health and armor advantage as AGV has found him with all game so far. Takes away the liquid rockets. Repeat wisely taking that middle ground. Gives him the ability to escape and defend himself a little bit. That could have been a bad situation. If Repeat falls all the way down there, could get juggled into the corner with rockets instead. Able to escape. So nice movement there. Oh, they run right into each other. Close range. Rockets going back and forth. Repeat down to 8 HP. AGV down to 45. One more shot could take out either player. So they're just going to back up and stack up. Belt is up. It doesn't look like Repeat's going to challenge it. So he's going to opt to hang out by that 100 armor. He did take that vest. But still only 33 HP. This is a bad spot for Repeat. AGV, though, nervous. Doesn't want to be too aggressive. Trying to get the cutoff instead of diving through after him. Uh, unfortunately, that's going to cost him a chance to really track him down as Repeat got away. Able to stack up some more health. And that's as weak as, or that's, I guess it's really as, as good of an opportunity as AGV has had all game. I think Repeat's been weak before, but AGV is usually trading damage that time. Oh, there's a big 100 damage rocket. Has a chance to follow it up, but Repeat doubles back on him with rockets of his own, and now Repeat has the, the upper hand. Trying to chase him down, takes him out with Flak, and that. Oh, and the double kill off the spawn. And I think that'll probably seal the deal there. So repeat at this point doesn't even need to worry about fighting. He can basically just take some time off the clock. I mean, it's going to be very difficult for AGV to make anything happen here with less than two and a half minutes to go. We'll see what it looks like from his perspective. Turning a corner and eating a combo is basically what it looks like. And there we go. He's going to go down two minutes on the clock, up nine to zero. Repeat looking very strong here in his first duel of the UTPL Season 3. And there's the Rampage to finish it off. Only 20 HP, but... You know, that's kind of been the case. The second half of this game, AGV has actually done some damage. He's gotten repeat weak, and repeat credit to him has been able to stay away, pick his battles, and right there, sometimes just good old-fashioned hitting stuff. Get your results. Close range rockets yet again. And we might actually see a, uh, a dominating here if we can find one more kill. Repeat might be going for it, being hyper aggressive in the last 30 seconds. And there it is, dominating 15 to nothing. Repeat looking very solid in this opening duel of the season for him. So DW going to take another point back. And that will lead us to our last duel of the matchup. It's been a long one with all the tiebreakers. Oh, and the bounce rockets. Repeat, relentless right now. Another kill.
So another point on the board for DW. Last duel of this matchup coming up next. All right, so next to last matchup of the day. We got one more duel to go. We're going to wait for that server to pop up. I'm going to send you over to our intermission screen, but we should be jumping back into this one quickly. server is up we'll be in there in just a bit alpha versus 59x the pain coming up in just a couple minutes Right, we are back on Leah to close things out. Here is your countdown. Three, two, one. And it's game time, baby. Con X5 here closing out SOW, or excuse me, SOD versus DW. Alpha versus 59X the pain. These two teams have been splitting points so far. And every point matters for those final rankings. We'll see what can happen. This will be map one. We just saw this map as the uh, last one played in the last matchup. Oh, early headshot by Alfred taking the lead. So 
The 59X gonna respawn near Stinger, but that's gonna be a problem for him because he's got combos flying all around him already. And Alfred trying to be aggressive early on and knows he has a bit of a health and armor advantage. Instead, he's gonna soak up some vials and maybe meet him around that, that vest will be spawning in 10 seconds. So, oh, that flat ball just barely missed. There you go, multiple sniper shots back and forth. A little bit of damage, but nothing really. Nothing really doing too much damage. These two have been very careful so far. 59X though has to be careful. Oh, if Alpha had turned the corner, would have caught him from behind instead. Sometimes standing still is the best thing you can do. And now Alpha is going to have to try to attack this 100 armor with rockets in his face. Looks like he does though, because he had a little bit better timing. So he's going to push him off and grab it. But that was kind of an interesting exchange there. We'll see if, if that happens again, the kind of double back like ambush situation. In any case, 15 seconds left until the belt spawns. Alpha gonna try to be sneaky himself. Maybe try to push it from up top. Okay, so he's waiting to see where he's gonna defend it from. Both players on opposite sides. That's a big sniper shot. It's probably gonna send him. No, he goes after it anyway. And Alpha grabs the belt and now has a chance to follow it up with a kill. Only 45 HP for his opponent. Missing the flag, but there's the follow up. Takes him out and up two to nothing. Oh, midair rocket misses. There's the falling rocket, though, in the midair sniper. Missing two easy shots as Alpha, but not the third. Takes some damage in the meantime, but still looking pretty comfy up three to nothing early on. Sniper rocket exchange, but Alpha now giving up that belt. This could be 59x the pain's chance to try to make some sort of a push here. You see them just baiting each other with rockets. I'm kind of surprised to not see him pull out Flak right here. So the bounce rocket, the follow up, one more shot will do it. 29 HP for Alpha wisely backs up and heals back up. He's got 15 seconds till that vest spawns across the map. Both players going to be running over to it. Ooh, he eats a rocket going for that shock. Does answer back. Oh, he doesn't hit the combo. He had it lined up perfectly. Instead, Alpha survives with 30 HP, grabs that 100 armor. He's going to have Stinger in his face. Remember that 100 armor vest is not 100% damage absorption, so he's got to be careful that Stinger could still take him out. Oh, Lux out a little bit. He's going to be on the run. So kind of some ring around the rosy happening right now. And right now, 59 next to pain, just waiting for, I guess, a comfortable opportunity to be aggressive here. Alpha is just raining down sniper shots all over the place. Keeping him, on, keeping him on the run, but pretty much dead even health and armor between these two right now. Uh, belt is up in two seconds. Nice timing there to keep Alpha off of it. Oh, he's up close with Flak. Does a little bit of damage. Eats a little bit of damage. The sniper shot, though, comes up huge. Alpha on the run. He's betting that he's going for that 100. He gets to the shock rifle first, but eats a sniper. Sniper. 
So this could be a big opportunity. We're past the halfway point. Three big shocks in a row. Alfred down to 18 HP. If 59X can find him anywhere. There he is with the stinger. One more shot will do it. There it is. On the board finally. Four to one. And he spawns right in front of him. Two quick shots. And again, Alfred on the run with 10 HP this time. So 100 armor is going to go. Unfortunately, not able to get that kill. And shield belt spawning right now. He's guessing and he guessed wrong. Alpha went for the belt instead of the health. That'll buy him a little more time and, and uh, maybe a bit of a, a, a miscalculation there. More than anything, that's going to take a ton of time off the clock for Alpha. So here you go, the chase down is real, trying to figure out where he's going. This is a map that's all about ambushes. You can't really just chase someone and, oh, Alfred makes him pay. Knocks him down to 47 HP, answers back with a combo, but unfortunately, Alfred had all of that shield belt, which allows him to survive, and now Alfred back in the driver's seat. There's that kill, five to one, and we are now under three minutes to go in this one. Nice prediction shock primaries. He does give up the belt though. And down to 10 HP, even with that damage absorption, this is gonna be a dangerous spot. There he goes, drops back down to get 60. Alpha at this point, just trying to bait him and get another free kill out of it. Oh, there's one big rocket. Baits out that wall dodge, or excuse me, wall run. Alfred's going to bounce up top, look for that belt. Belt's not going to spawn for 25 more seconds, so I'm not sure if he's just anticipating an attack or, or, or what. But then again, with only two minutes to go, all he really has to do here is just kind of chill. There's a couple fadeaway snipers, that nice rocket. Takes him down to 33 HP, and I think that's pretty much going to do it, honestly, with... Under two minutes to go. Four frags in the two minutes on this map can absolutely happen, but make it five. Alpha sends them back to spawn with nothing. And control of the belt. Finding on the spawn yet again to close this one off strong. Oh, nice combo there. Threading the needle. That was perfect timing. Alfred maintaining complete control of this map and really just looking sharp. And there's the killing spree to close it out. Give you a quick look at the scoreboard, but it's been pretty uh, pretty much all Alfred in this one. And what you'll notice is he's actually conceded quite a few pickups. I mean, you can look at the, look at the armors and realize you know, he wasn't just coming into every fight with an advantage. He was using a lot of positioning. There is the concession. So map one going to Alpha. But again, map two, a fresh start. And we'll see what happens there.
All right, looks like Erase will be map two. All right, players already. Here is your countdown. Three, two, one. And it's game time, baby. Con X5 jumping in here. We've got the last duel between these two teams. Map one going to Alpha looking strong. Map two, though, is fresh start. You can see Alpha already jumping on his opponent. Trying to come back at him with the Stinger. Ooh, the combos, though. This is such a shock heavy map. Prediction combos can be absolutely devastating on this map. And then you see another combo coming out to get the kill. Oh, baits him to the 100 armor again and three quick kills. Less than a minute into this one. Oh, nice rocket from below. So smart move there. He shoots the rocket at the corner of the ledge, getting that splash damage rather than trying to hit him directly. He did manage to steal that belt away though. So 100 armor on top of that belt. If he can grab some health, he'll be in a good spot to try to challenge Alpha now. So the game of cat and mouse now around that 100 armor. Oh, so classic. Alfred just getting stuck back behind there. So here we go. 59 extra pain on the board. And a chance to follow it up off the spawn. Needs to hit one more shot. He's got rockets. Wouldn't be surprised. There they go. Pulling back within one. So you can already see feeling much more comfortable on this map. Only down by one. Has Alpha down to 80 HP, just snagged Belt, so again in good position to chase him down. Oh, didn't take the shot there. I don't think he anticipated him. Moving through there that quickly. Mid-air shot primaries, though, and the turnaround falling shot. Nice tracking aim right there, pulling back into 3-3 three, three territory. So now, that more of an even match here. Alfred jumped on him pretty quickly last game. He spent the rest of the match trying to come from behind, trying to build some momentum here. Right on top of him, tied up even after about three minutes. Oh, and he gets flacked from behind, but the nice combo answers right back, and the flak again, Alfred. With 24 HP, manages to snag that shield belt. He's got to be careful. Whoa, that combo could have done some major damage. Both of these players are lining and lining each other up perfectly with combos and just not finishing them in the flak ball, though. Does not miss. Straight to the face, gets him another kill. Back up to a two-frag lead. With that ever-important buffer kill. So Alper on the run now, looking for an opportunity to just take a peek at his opponent. If he can sneak up on him, he knows he has the health and armor advantage. 10 seconds till the belt spawns. I'm actually a little surprised. Alper went back for Vest there. He takes the quickest path to belt, but that's going to make him a bit predictable. He gets away with it, though, and gets down onto the belt without taking any damage. Kind of surprised by that. 
Got a little bit fortunate. Now he's looking for the spawn kill there. Ooh, taking that lift jump is so dangerous. Oh, but Alfred misses the, misses the shot. Nice wall run. You can see right through his line of sight, so he couldn't get that shot off. But as we approach the halfway point, Alfred back in the lead. And looking pretty comfortable. Not having to force anything at this point. They trade sniper shots, but of course when you have that much health and armor, you don't even need to pick up health afterwards. He actually instinctively does that, even though he still had 111 health. Oh, and 59X, killing himself on Alfred's face with rockets. Alfred survives barely. Only 19 HP, though, so the follow-up kill leaves him, though, with 10 HP in the turnaround right around the corner with that Enforcer. So back and forth, and another kill off the spawn. A fury of kills back and forth in the last 30 seconds. I said Fury, I meant, I meant Flurry. You know, like Mad Max Flurry Road. Now I kind of want a blizzard. I might go grab some ice cream between these matches. In any case, got me all distracted here. Uh, Alpha. Oh, mid air flak ball. Nice shot there. A little bit more splash damage, and he is just predicting perfectly this match. Looking awfully sharp. And two more flash balls bouncing him around. 59X trying to stand in there and try to make something happen. But so many flak balls. I think he was probably counting down, you know. Kind of a dirty, hairy situation. Like, how many shots do you have in that gun? He felt lucky. He wasn't lucky. Alfred got him up to a seven frag lead. And we are counting down the time now. Under four minutes to go. Couple of quick shock primaries though, so 59X standing in there, pulling within six. We've definitely seen comebacks on this map before. Couple more, and there it is, pulling within five. He can find him off the spawn, and that's the key in this map, is turning one kill into two. Off of those spawn kills, there's another one, pulling within four. If he can keep this pace up, he'll probably win by like 70, so gotta feel like he's done a pretty good job closing that gap. And the bait gets another kill. 59X the pain looking for the spawn kill again. And really credit Alpha there for not falling for the spawn, uh, for the obvious spawn kill spot. But here we go, the follow up. And now on a killing spree, back with N2. And now plenty of time on the clock and control of the map. This one's slipping away from Alpha right now, though he still does have a lead. So one big shot could slow this momentum. But all of a sudden, we've got us a match. Big combo, looking for the follow-up primaries. 59X has been on point with the shock rifle in the last couple minutes, pulling with N2. I'm surprised he didn't go straight for the rockets there, but Alpha hasn't been spawning there. He's been spawning up top by Sniper. I think he knows that now, grabbing that 100 armor and trying to meet him up top. Oh, the double back almost got ambushed by Stinger with, with a full assortment of weapons, though that may have benefited 59X, but instead, Alpha gonna chew him up with that stinger. He's gonna put a lot of pressure on him. He hits that last second shot. That was a clutch primary to tie the game up. If he doesn't hit that, he probably goes down to that stinger. And it's a two point lead for Alpha instead. He's got 30 HP on that rocket. Just whizzes by his face. Takes a little bit of damage off the wall, but able to get away. Fight over the belt. A big combo standing in there, but it cost him a kill as he turns the corner. And the lead back to Alpha and now. It's got to be full on aggression mode. He does manage to get a shock rifle in his hand and Alpha pulls the trigger on that, uh, maybe not a spawn kill, but a follow up kill certainly. And the lead back up to two. That was a huge turnaround there by Alpha. Alpha. Trying to track him up top and gears him around. Doesn't want him to build any kind of momentum, but also doesn't want to give him any free kills. He's running away right now. Gonna go down. Alpha actually kills himself with the rockets, but that takes 59X down to 25 HP. It's gonna be a big fight over Shock right here. This could be the map. Oh, Alpha takes him out. Luckily for him, he had the link gun, which is the right weapon in his hands. 
Alfred now in control with less than a minute to go. All he really has to do is survive, but he jumps down. Dangerous play to dive down into that shield belt. Uh, fortunately for him, 59X to the pain didn't have any weapons at his disposal. And there it is, the exclamation point. Up by three with 35 seconds left to go. I think Alfred's going to hang on to this one, but 59X not going away, still pinging him down with Enforcer. Again, the nice movement to get across to that health. But time just going to run out. And DW going to pull off another point in this matchup. Four, three, two, one. So a 2-0 victory for Alpha. But uh, really this matchup, SOW versus DW, lots of really close matches. Almost saw the comeback here. But Alpha able to hang on and secure that point for his team. So that'll wrap it up. Third match of the day. Second one I've casted him. We've got one left to 